in a job interview there are two types of questions one that comes with a right and wrong answers and other that does not have any right or wrong answer it tries to check your approach your ability for a given problem how do you think for a given problem system design is one of such topic which you can expect to come your way when you are giving interviews for microsoft amazon google facebook these kind of organizations okay in this video i am going to tell you how you should approach a system design problem how you should answer what are the things you should include in your answer and what is that interviewer is trying to check when they ask you system design questions let's start without any delay so guys you need to focus on these seven points when somebody ask you a system design question or they want to check your approach on that okay requirements performance scaling load balancing caching db design and error handling okay so where from this list comes this list comes from my own experience reading multiple articles multiple talking to multiple peoples who attended interview in facebook google amazon etc okay so uh, all these we will see one by one and you have to understand guys some of you who is not having any idea on what is system design this is basically a uh, a process they will try to check whether you understand the process of how an application or how a system runs okay so it's not enough just to know how machine learning model works or how statistics works rather if you go to little little senior experience level maybe my level or 15 years level these things become really really important even at junior level they will check you okay in system design there are two uh, levels okay one is called high level system design also known as hld other is it called low level system design known as lld okay so we will cover we can cover both but here i will see how you guys are interested in this and then i can go in more detail of lld this video i will cover more of hld high level design okay so the uh, the concept is very very simple in high level you tell overall view of how the things will be in low level you go into more details of stuff okay so understanding the requirement the first thing we will try to understand all these things with a simple example okay so let's take a simple example through which we will try to relate all those points okay so the example will be let's say somebody tells you hey i want to have a website okay what they want to have they want to have a website to do what to enable users to enable users the buying decision of a stock okay so i am writing here enable users suppose you you come on that website and you just say i want to buy some stock let's say britannia enable users to make decision i will write here to make decision okay so there is a website on that website if you go you see a search box in that search box you just give a for example share price let's say britannia uh, share name let's say britannia and you say submit and that website website says you buy or not buy okay buy or not buy so this is basically internally a machine learning trained model that takes you know uh, name of your stock call some apis and give you the response saying buy or not buy just an example i have taken so that i can relate with all the, all those seven steps okay so guys let's go back to the requirement okay i told you this is the requirement at high level now this is one statement that the interviewer will throw on you this is one statement that they will throw on you hey this is what i want now how do you approach this okay another kind of problem can be um, i want to build a application that can detect faulty mobile phones in the assembly line of mobile phones other can be i want to build a build a application that can classify the image automatically based on you know when the employee walks into the office okay whether somebody walked in or did not walk in any kind of scenarios they will give they will try to understand your approach so our scenario is this remember no right or wrong answer in open ended question this is an open ended question okay i am just trying to build a build a thought process for you how to approach these these kind of problems okay so this is a open ended question that is thrown to you in requirements what all you will ask you will first ask many things you have to ask in the requirement okay first is how many users are you expecting in this particular problem i am asking okay how many users are you expecting to use this application this this question itself can be uh, 
can be answered in multiple ways. For example, how many users on weekday, how many users on weekends, how many users on peak hours, for example, what is the peak hour definition when the stock market is open? That might be a peak hour, right? How many users are you expecting in that time? Then you can ask, is there any existing solution or is this a brand new solution? Is this brand new solution? Okay. Is this brand new solution? Okay. This, how, why you are asking this question? Because you want to ensure if there is something already existing, you want to accommodate that. Remember guys, in requirements, ask many, many questions. Then only interviewer will understand that, okay, this guy understands this stuff. This guy is interested in solving this problem, okay? Then you ask multiple questions regarding capacity. For example, uh, am I developing this on cloud or am I developing this on on-prem or you know, any specific kind of platform that you guys are using. What is source of your data? I'm not writing here, I'm just telling you. What is source of the data? What kind of data are we expecting, right? So in the background, do we have, in this case, for example, do we have all these stock prices for past one year, two year? Do we have a model to which I'm calling? All these questions you will ask, okay? So if there is no model to which you are calling, you have to build a model in high level design. No need to go in much detail of what level you will, what model you will build and all that. But high level, you can say, okay, I will build a logistic regression model to take this decision by not by. But please put more focus on asking questions from multiple, multiple point of view. You see here, I have written load balancing. I have written scaling. I have written caching. All these things give the interviewer a perception that you understand the things. Okay. You can design a system. So here I'm asking some relevant questions. How many users I'm asking to compute? How much size I want? How much space I want? How much bandwidth I want? Okay. This question I already told you I'm asking because I want to understand if there is an already existing solution. What kind of platform will give me idea on how to formulate or build my solution, right? So in requirements, ask as many questions as you can, okay? On various perspective, I have just given you a few few perspective here, right? On various things you can ask, who will be the users? Are they expert users or are they totally non-technical people? Are we having a mobile app also or this, or this is just a website? There is no end to it, okay? More and more questions you ask, more and more ideas you get on how to design your application. This is about your requirement part. Understanding the technical requirement very, very well, what all you need, okay? Then comes the performance part. So in performance part, you will ask, hey, how do you say that this application is doing good? Or how do you say that this application is not doing good? For example, people came and said yesterday, Britannia, whether to buy stock or not to buy stock, right? So your model said buy or don't buy, okay? So buy or don't buy. Now tomorrow, how do you evaluate the performance of this, okay? So people will be coming and people will be, let's say this is one stock, right? People will be coming and hundreds of stock they will ask advice for, right? So how do you measure the performance of my application? Now this can be measured in multiple ways. Number one, how many false positives or false negative did you give? Okay. This is from machine learning point of view. Second can be what was the throughput or what was the response time to the user? So this is from technical point of view, not from machine learning point of view. Okay. So let's say latency of 10 seconds or five seconds, let's say. So all of you know that stock price moves very, move very fast, right? So if your latency is like 15 seconds and all, that might be a little uh, difficult for users to use that application, right? So what is your latency? I mean, what is your latency threshold that you want to have? What is your maximum false positive, false negative percentage that you want to have? right? Then we can say uh, in terms of network, right? So let's say in the peak hours, there, there will be different kind of threshold, right? In the peak hours, this five seconds can go two seconds. In the non-peak hours, let's say when, when market is closed, right? This five seconds can be made 15 seconds, not a problem. So what do you want to do? Okay. So these kind of questions, if you ask, right, they will have an understanding that, okay, this guy understands the business. This guy understands what, what is that application is intending to do. Okay. So here also in terms of performance, ask questions. Okay. Now comes the question when, when you understood the requirements and when you understood how the performance will be measured for this application, right? Then comes the question of how do you design this application? So I will give you a simple flow here. For example, whenever a website or 
let's say in simple english i'm saying a website this is a website there will be a backend so this will be a backend where all the processing will happen and then there will be a database okay there will be a database right now what happens a user comes a user logs in here okay gives a stock price a stock goes to the backend this backend probably calls an api so i will write here an api which makes the prediction let's say your model api that makes the prediction result comes back here and results is sent to the user and more, maybe some data is fetched from the database and both these things combined are sent to the user this can be one very very simple approach but this will extend now okay this will extend now so let's come to the third point third point is about your scaling okay so as i told there will be off peak and on peak okay so on peak can be when the market is open when the market is open then number of users may be 10000 every second okay so when the number of users are 10000 then you can say to you know interviewer that i will increase the capacity of my server for on peak hours now to increase the capacity of your server there is a concept of scaling okay this scaling can be done in two ways one is called vertical scaling and other is called horizontal scaling vertical scaling and horizontal scaling vertical scaling means there is one machine one computer and the ram is let's say 4 gb now you want to increase the ram to 16 gb same machine okay so you increase the ram to 16 gb this is an example of vertical scaling horizontal scaling means there was one computer in your in your server now you want to add one more computer of same capacity or different capacity this is horizontal scaling both has its own advantages and disadvantages okay so this is easier to maintain this is difficult to maintain this is fault tolerant which means not a single point of failure this is a single point of failure if something wrong happens similarly there are different pluses and minuses of you know this but scaling is one thing that must be considered because we are considering the scenario of off peak and on peak so when there are more users we will take more servers when there are less users we will take less servers this is one example of scaling that you have to explain in your own words when you explain you know the fundamentals of all these things understand the basics of what is scaling now if you guys are interested in my next part i am sorry to say this but i think not many people will be interested in more technical details but i will definitely create a part 2 of this video and if you guys give me comments saying you like you are liking this explanation then i will be very happy to create a more detailed video okay i will cover in the part 2 of this load balancing cache db design and error handling okay with the same example same search stock price recommendation example okay give me a thumbs up guys if you like this video and please subscribe if you have not done yet i will see you all in the next video and rest of the things and then more videos on system design if you want to see you all in the next video guys wherever you are stay safe and take care